Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be doing part 8 of what if Naruto was taken by the Raikage. The light goal for the last one was destroyed very quickly. So today the light goal is going to be 290. Get this one to 290 and part 9 will be out as soon as possible. Comment down below and tell me what you think of this episode. Remember to share it with all of your friends on your social media platform. Remember to stay in and stay safe and enjoy the what if. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. Start the intro. The last time we left off, Naruto had a big crush on Hinata and everything played true. He ended up getting in contact with her but Kronai Sensei came there and stopped him before he could spend more time with her. So the tuning exam happened and Naruto was placed right beside Hinata. He was so happy to get to see her again. You guys can switch across and check out the playlist. And watch the other parts before you watch this. But for now, let's get straight into this part. Naruto looked down at the exam paper. He was totally clueless because some of them involved math or something and he didn't know what to do. No one said that there will be math. He sat there and he thought, looking at his blank answer sheet. Naruto was thinking to slam his face into the deck until he lost consciousness but that was a very silly idea and he would never pass if he did that everyone around him was sitting down and seemed like they were passing very quickly Naruto felt like a complete moron watching everyone get through the test so easily he turned and saw Inata put her pencil down realizing that she had already completed the test now he just felt embarrassed, he didn't know what to do. Of course, if he had noticed her deactivating her Byakugan, he had pieced together the true purpose of the test, but he didn't notice that. Are you seriously this stupid Naruto? The first answer is 10, Kurama said, after a long silence. What? How the hell do you know that? I've been around for a long time Naruto, I can do math. Just write down everything I say and we shall be fine. Naruto decided to take the risk and started to copy down everything Kurama told him. Kurama passed Naruto to the test very easily and very quickly and with minutes to spare he checked up on how Karu and Omoi was doing. Using his sensory powers he could sense that the two of them were strangely calm. Those two probably find a way to cheat without getting caught. That is very impressive since they don't have eyes like the Uchiha or the two Hyugas in the room. What is with that second Hyuga? I can feel a lot of rage coming off that guy and some of it is aimed to Hinata for some reason. What is with him? Naruto thought as he stared over at Neji. He is probably a branch member who hates her for being in the main family. How is that her fault? Kurama asks. It is not, but you know how it is. People with a lot of rage in them use any excuse to get it out in any way. It's just the way some of them are. But one thing, he better not hurt her or you have me to deal with. Naruto thought was cut off with Kurama when he heard all penciled down it's time for the 10 question, Aibaki yelled. Everyone in the room immediately put their pencils down and turned towards Aibaki at the front of the class. Before I move on, I must give out the rules for the 10 question. The first rule is that you may leave and not choose to 
complete the 10 questions. Doing so will make you and your team forfeit their chance of becoming tunings. Why the hell will we do that then? A random ninja yelled out. Because of the second rule. If you miss this question, you won't be able to take the tuning exam for the rest of your life. Everyone in the room was shocked. Expect for one person. The person thought, what kind of lie is that? Are these people really going to fall for that kind of bullshit? It was Naruto because he has a sensory type. So, he knew when someone was lying. Kurama then told him, not everyone here is a, hu a human lie detector Naruto. So just shut up and let the weaklings give up. So, there will be less competition. As Aibaki finished saying that sentence, people started to drop out of the exams like flies. Only 24 teams were left by the end. Aibaki smiled and congratulated the rest of them on passing the first phase of the tuning exam. What? Everyone in the room said. Aibaki started with some speech and telling them that they are the only ones who jumped in and not knowing what was going to happen. They jumped into the unknown so the rest of them forfeited their chance because they heard about the part that they wouldn't be able to take the tuning exam for the rest of their lives but you guys stick to it. Naruto already knew that this was going to happen so Naruto just drowned him out and start talking to Kurama. That was really boring. I better get to fight someone next time. If you want excitement then get ready. I sense some excitement coming your way. As Kurama finished talking, something in a huge black cape came crashing through the window. It was a girl. It was Anko. She took out a black coat and fling it, pin it, in, pin it on the wall with a bunch of kunais. Alright you maggots, my name is Anko. Materashi and I'm the next proctor for the second phase of a tuning exam. Aibaki got in closer and he face palm and said, Uncle, you do realize that the second phase is tomorrow, right? I forgot, she said. Uncle started blushing and stood at the top of the class looking at everyone for a few seconds. She was kind of embarrassed. Everyone in the room was stunned at the ridiculous woman in front of them. But Naruto was stunned for a completely different reason as his, mon as his mouth held down low. Oh my god, look at the size of those things, he said. Damn it, I cannot stop staring. Please don't let anyone notice, he said. Hinata then looked over and saw Naruto. She thought in her mind, Naruto is staring at that woman's chest. Maybe if I open my jacket, he will do the same to me. Anko then noticed Naruto staring at her, but she didn't really pay it any mind. After everything died down, she told them where the next part of the test will be. Naruto turned around after everything is over, looking for Hinata, but she was being dragged away by her teammates. Their eyes locked for a quick second and Hinata managed to mouth the words, I am sorry, before she was dragged out of the room by her teammates. Naruto was getting really annoyed but he still decided to treat his team to lunch because after all they passed the first part of the tuning exam. A couple of minutes pass, Naruto is eating his third bowl of ramen. Man, those guys have some real nerves to drag Hinata away like that. What do you expect dumbass? Karu said angrily. She was tired of listening to Naruto talk about Hinata all the day all time. I am sorry Naruto but maybe you should give up on this girl. Amoy didn't approve of Naruto crush either. Why can't you guys be a little more supportive? Naruto said. You're trying to bang a girl from another village. Why do you think we aren't being more supportive? Keru snaps at Naruto. I am not trying to do that. I just want to ask her on a date. Couple of times that's all. Go down on her a few times, that's more like it, Amoy said with a small chuckle. Shut the hell up, I'm not going to do that sort of thing. Amoy started to list off Naruto's sins, what he has done at the Cloud Village. Naruto's face get redder and redder the more Amoy listed. Don't forget the time we caught him watching that hentai movie. 
I never know that. Why do you want to watch that tentacle shit? Keru, jump into the conversation. Will you two just shut up and drop it already? Fine, go be an idiot by yourself then. Let's go, Amoy. Keru and Amoy got up, left having finished their food already. Naruto was left alone with the stand with Amy, who has been listening. Everything. Naruto, did you really do all that stuff they mentioned? Well, uh, yes. He decided to come clean to Amy. Amy looked at Naruto and hung her head in shame, and so did Naruto. While Naruto was upset, Hinata was absolutely livid. Kurunai had told Kiba and Shino everything and instructed them to keep her away from Naruto. Any hopes she had at getting close to him were instantly shattered by those two. She ran away from them as fast as she could and she went home and she locked herself in her room. And just laid on her bed, she sat there until there was a knock on her door. Hinata, dads want to see you. He wants to know if you pass the first part of the exam or not. Hinata didn't want to be nowhere near her father right now, but she knew if she didn't show up, he would just come up there to her. She dragged herself out of bed and opened the door. It was her little sister, Hanabi. Hanabi had a worried look on her face. Sis, you didn't fail, did you? No, I passed. It was an easy test that I completed with the aid of my Byakugan. Then, big sis, why you look so gloomy? We all thought the worst when you ran in and locked your bedroom door. I was just tired. You do not have to worry about me, dear. Hinata bend and kiss Hanabi on the forehead. Thank you for your concern, though. You know I hate when you do that, sis. Hanabi said as she blushed and rubbed the spot that Hinata had kissed. Hinata smiled at Hanabi and walked to the clan's head office. When she got there, she knocked and waited for a response. You may enter, a cold voice came from the room. Hinata did as instructed and opened the door. She didn't look directly at her father when she walked in. She did a small bow, it was custom, when talking to the clan's head. She sat down in a chair in front of her father's desk. Hinata, did you pass the first phase of the tuning exam? Yes sir, she said. Neji hasn't arrived home yet. Did he pass as well? Yes sir. Tell me what the test was like this year. The first phase was always different for every examinee. But the goal remained the same. Hinata went on to explain the test and how she passed. You did well to see the deception. You also did well to properly use your Byakugan. You are dismissed. Hinata stood up and bowed before taking her leave. She thought in her head, he didn't even say that he was proud of me. Hinata made her way back into her room where she locked herself away again. Back at the testing site, Aibaki was making himself around the room, picking up all the tests that the examinees had left. When he made his way to Naruto's desk, because Naruto was the funny one in the orange suit, he decided to take a look at the answers. What he saw made him laugh. That boy got every single answer wrong. Naruto Uzumaki, huh? That boy sure is a funny one. Hinata awoke in early the day of the second exam. She had passed out the night before, still wearing her clothes from yesterday. Finding herself Thinking about the way, Naruto looked at a proctor for the second exam. Her name was Anko, right? She thought. She got out of the bed and walked up to the mirror to examine herself. Hinata wasn't the type to casually flaunt her looks, but the way Naruto looked at that woman got her thinking, was she capable of getting the same reaction from him? Took off the jacket and looked into the mirror, the first thing she noticed was her chest was rapidly growing and was huger than anyone she knew at her age. She turned her body so she can look at it from a side distance to see how far they got from her chest. She compared herself to Ino and Sakura and she realized how far the difference was. She found herself thinking about how Naruto will react to see her like this. Would he stare? Would other people stare at me? She thought. But her thoughts were interrupted 
when she heard someone clear their throat. She whipped around to see her little sister. Her sister had a big grin on her face. Checking yourself out, sister, Hanabi said mockingly. Get out, I have to get ready for the exam, Hinata yelled. She was completely embarrassed and red. Hanabi laughed and said, Is that what you were really doing? <laughs> get out, Hinata said as she picked up the pillow off her bed and tossed it at Hanabi. But Hanabi sighed the pillow and started to laugh more and said, All right, dad was the one who sent me in here to tell you that he wants you to eat a big breakfast. He said that it's to make up for you falling asleep and missing dinner. Hinata just reached and grabbed her stomach. She was so caught up in her thoughts, she didn't realize that she was starving. Thank you, Hanabi. I'll make sure to get a big breakfast. After I finish my bath, try to keep your hands off yourself in there. Hanabi? Hinata couldn't believe what her little sister just implied. Hinata stared at Hanabi for some seconds. By the way, you should find a better spot for those dirty books, Hanabi said as she turned around and started to skip away. I read them for the story, Hinata yelled back but Hanabi is already gone. Hinata jumps on the bed and covers her face in another pillow. Naruto morning wasn't going so good as well. Naruto and his teammate has been kicked out of their room early so his sensei and her new friend can enjoy each other company. They were sitting at Ichiraku ramen eating breakfast. This is some bullshit. Karu finally broke the silence. They has been silent since they arrived. Us be sticking out here eating Ichiraku ramen for breakfast or Yujito kicking us out so early? Amoy questioned, wanting to know what is on her mind. Oh, Sensei kicking us out, I didn't even get a chance to take a bath this morning because of her stupid booty call. There is a public bath not far from here, we have enough time to get there before the exam. Naruto turned and said to Karu. Karu turned to look at Naruto with a serious look on her face. If you so much as think to peek on me, I will cut off your winky and wear it as a necklace. You hear me, Naruto? I am not playing. Naruto's face turns sickly white, and he could only nod his head to confirm that he understand what Karu was saying. They finished their food in silence and made their way to the bathhouse. Inside the bathhouse, Naruto and Aomoi were sitting in the water relaxing. Well, at least Aima was relaxing. Naruto was sitting at the wall, staring at the wall that separated the woman's from the man's. He was sitting there deep in thought. One little peep couldn't hurt. Just one good look, that is all I want. I cannot believe I'm debating this. I'm gonna do it. Naruto started to get closer and closer to the dividing wall. He was almost in arm's length when suddenly, Aima grabbed Naruto and pulled him back to his side. Naruto, I wouldn't be a good friend if I let you do what you're planning to do. You heard what Karu said, right? If you peep on her, she will cut it off for real and you won't be able to have a family. If you can't have children, when I have children, they won't have your kids to be best friends. Omoy, you're a good friend, you know that man? Naruto said as the two embraced each other in a hug. Doing their hug, Someone walked in and the two looked at each other and realizing what their situation must have looked to outsiders. It is not what it looked like the two said as they broke the hug. Couple of hours later at the testing site, every team that has passed the first test were now there. They were all standing at attention waiting for the proctor to show up. She of course made her entrance with enough flair as she did for the first time. There was a sudden explosion and after the dust clear, Anko was seen with a thumbs up. With a banner behind her that read, the super sexy Anko, present of the forest of death. Under it, a small drawing of Anko with a thumbs up. Alright you maggots, it's time for you to take the second part, the tuning exam. This time, it's a survival test. She went on to explain this part of the test and handed them their waivers, so if they die, it wasn't the fault of the leaf. And she explained everything, the scrolls, they must find the heaven and earth, 
If you have two screws, you pass. So it was pretty simple. Lots of them thought, but they were kind of worried about signing these waivers. So you really mean that we could die? Some of them thought. But Anko sent everyone out there at their assigned gates and they stood out there and Anko gave the signal for all of them to head off. But guys, I'm in right here. Want the next part of this? You know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on the bell notification, stay posted. But I'm off for now, guys. Peace.